FM 92.7. My name is Kelvin Owusuanta. Let's get uh, into the world of sports and starting from the Christian Achu Educational Center. And it was inaugurated at Senior Break in the Central Region on Wednesday, bringing into achievement the late footballer's dream to establish an orphanage home and school to protect the rights to education and basic necessities of life for deprived kids. Now, the nine-unit classroom block is estimated at £40,000, and which was completed with funding from Newcastle United, Chelsea, and Everton are choose former clubs and channel through arms around the child. He really wanted the school to be finished. He was, you know, he was really keen to be have everything finished by June so that he could bring some of his friends to celebrate and uh, to you know to witness the amazing work that um, he had done um, in starting the progress and the and of the of the actual building So that was Ellie Milner, who is in charge of the director at Arms Around the Child. So there were hundreds of other individual corporate donors who contributed to ensure that Achoo's legacy to inspire and impact the community does not go into extinction after his unfortunate death. So uh, thank you so much, each and everyone, who made that contribution to keep Christian Achoo's legacy. Now moving on, Ghana's under-23 coach Ibrahim Tanko says inadequate rest for his players was the cause of their disappointing performance against Morocco. On Tuesday night, Morocco went into the game with a win on Saturday against Guinea, while Ghana played on Saturday defeat Sunday, defeating Congo 3-2, presenting the Black Metis just a day to train. Tanko has therefore attributed the team's 5-1 loss to Morocco on their inability to have enough rest. Yeah, I mean the bad performance of us, as I said earlier, I think we give them a lot of respect and. Yeah, uh, I also said it's not an excuse, but we have a day rest, they have a two. You could see also from the game of Guinea against Congo how the scoreline was because of Congo also have only one day rest. Yeah, but um, as I said, we still have a chance in this tournament, we still have the last game, so we are going to prepare for that. Yeah, the performance of the referees, I think uh, I can't say much. We have the VAR who is supporting them. so. And all the decisions they take, I think, is okay. So I think um, they are doing very well. Yes, uh, the reason is what I said. And the Moroccans have two days more rest than us. As uh, we see it in the game against Guinea against Congo, that the Guineas are very faster than and the Congo. So I think uh, that's the reason. And we now have also two days to rest both things so we are going to make use of it and then try to win our next match so that is from Abraham Tanko. He have admitted that they showed a lot of respect, which caused their downfall in the end. Now, as a result, Ghana and Guinea are tied on three points with the host Morocco, who currently lead and already qualified for the semi-finals of the competition with six points. Well, Ibrahim Tanko on Friday's game against Guinea. Yeah, I think uh, both of us want to go to the next stage, so uh, I think uh, both teams are going to prepare very well to win the game. So, yeah, I can only talk about my team. I don't know what the game is want, but definitely we want to win to go to the next stage. Well, coach Ibrahim Tanko there now of uh, Frank Delali Awute has spoken on how the team can ensure a win and qualification on Friday. Nothing short of a victory would send Ghana to the semi finals. I think the, the first one is concentration. Because if you look at the kind of goals we concede, elementary goals, goals that you don't expect regular footballers to concede, that comes to concentration. I don't know if it's because of the fans in the stadium. I spoke with one of the journalists there and he said there are a lot of fans there but sometimes I believe they need to be more concentrated and you need the coaches to talk to them make, the, make sure that they are more structured clear to instructions because we're all over the place in our, in our last two games defensively we've been bad uh, with our structure it's something that we need to work on because in competitions like this considering too many goals is very difficult because you, got, you need the chance to score more goals to be able to survive and as a result of that we need to work on that as well i think concentration is very bad defending we need to work on it i think goal scoring is not really a problem because at least we've not struggled with that if we can be able to work on these things we can we can go far 
So that is it there from Frank Delali on the Black Matches. Ghana will be playing against Guinea tomorrow at 8 p.m. Now let's have a quick look at some of the games that I played yesterday. And in the matches, well, it was another victory for Egypt. They defeated Mali, uh, who finished the game with 10 men, one goal to nil. And Gabon suffered a 1 0 loss at the hands of Niger. So you look at Group B, Egypt lead with four points, Niger, four points, Mali, three points, and Gabon have just uh, zero points at the base of the table which means they cannot qualify to the next stage now looking uh, back to the ghana football association and they have suggested to effect a mega increase of 900 percent of the initial nomination fee for presidential aspirants ahead of the upcoming congress which is expected to pave the way for elections if the idea is approved by congress presidential hopefuls for the gfa elections may be obliged to shell out 50,000 ghana cities each as opposed to the initial 5,000 ghana cities nomination fee which happened uh, in 2019 this was revealed in a recent statement signed by the general secretary of the gfa prosper harrison Addo, on the 24th of june suggesting a significant increase in the nomination fee for the presidential contenders ghana football's uh, governing body explains that the plan fee increase by citing the high uh, rising costs of um, the organization's elections such as logistics transportation and accommodation felix remark touches on this subject as only 166 people are expected to vote well i, I was a bit surprised to see 50,000, especially for those who want to contest for the fa president uh, that's almost 900 percent increment from the last uh, time that uh, Kett got, you know, nominated and then, in fact, elected as president of the of the FA. But uh, I don't want to draw a lot of meanings into this because it's just a proposal. I'm sure uh, those who make the final decision will consider a lot of things, the economic situation of the country. Because if you look at even the political parties, you ask yourself how much is the filing fee for both NDC and and, and MPP. For me, even if they propose the fifty thousand, I think that it will be too much. I feel that for for an association like the FA, they should be getting funds to, you know, uh, organize an election. And I, I don't really think that 50,000 is the fair amount to be to, to charge, you know, those who want to really fight for the position of the FA. But some feel that it's a, it's a tactic from the FA to, you know, uh, prevent people from, from standing. I don't want to believe so. They will still need money to, con uh, you know, to organize the election. But I don't think that, you know, outpricing candidates out with this this amount is the right thing to do and I'm, I'm i'm hoping that those who make their final decision will consider everything available and make sure that we have a more reasonable fee you know to charge those who want to fight for the seat of the fa president well let's see how things will pan out while we wait uh, the congress the ordinary congress is on the 10th of july at the great hall at USD in commerce now let's move on to the uefa executive committee and on when uh, wednesday they closed the loophole regarding the amortization of player contracts the amortization of players registration will be limited to five years in order to ensure equal treatment of all clubs and improve financial sustainability steven taylor throws more light on this new rule well, it's a very targeted, speedy response to um, the publicity in relation to the last transfer window when um, particular clubs were, were buying players at significant fees. And it was well publicised that those uh, the lengths of the contracts being given to the players were significantly in excess of the norm. Um, on the basis, it, it seemed fairly targeted to spread the uh, transfer fee over the length of that contract. Um, to put this in the simplest terms, UEFA have these financial sustainability rules, um, which is called the squad cost rule, where effectively they compare the amount spent on transfers and players wages against the revenue of the club. Um, and so if you can spread the transfer fee over, say, a 10 year contract, if you've got a 100 million pound transfer fee, you spread it over 10 years of a contract, then that's 10 million pounds in the accounts. Uh, the UEFA are now saying that it's a maximum of five years. So that would mean it would have to be 20 million pounds in the accounts for each of those years. And that's what would show in the accounts with regard to whether you're the right side of the rules or not. Well, let's see how this is going to pan out. But Taylor um, feeds us on which clubs will be most affected by this. Well, it will be the clubs that have the money to spend that don't necessarily have the revenue um, to back it up um, and can enter into these contracts with players that are prepared to come to them on the longer term contracts than would be the norm. Um, they would have to cut the cloth accordingly. And even if it's an eight year contract, um, an £100 million fee, they know that even if, though it's an eight year contract, which is allowed under English law, 
notwithstanding that the FIFA rules and regulations are that you shouldn't have more than a five-year contract. You can have longer than that in England. But if it's an eight-year contract and it's a £100 million fee, it will be um, valued over the five-year period that UEFA is stipulating as mandatory. Well, that is it there from UEFA and Aston Villa will be playing in Europe next season, specifically in the UEFA Europa League. And Matty Cash has already expressed his excitement to be playing European football at the Villa Park. It's amazing. Um, I mean, the gaffer's fantastic since he's come in. We've completely changed, um, obviously, a lot of different things. But yeah, we've we had a great run towards the end of the season and got back into Europe. So uh, European nights at Villa Park are going to be amazing. Something we're really looking forward to. So it's good. I think the Premier League is a high demand as it is. But obviously, playing in a European tournament, um, yeah, obviously, it's going to be really more demanding than it was last year. So yeah, we need obviously. It's not in my hands, but whatever the, the, the manager and the, and the board decide to do, I think they'll make the right decision. Well, let's see whether they're going to make the right decisions in getting more players. Now that rolls us into transfers and Arsenal have agreed a deal worth £105 million to sign West Ham United captain Declan Rice. Now talks are continuing between the two clubs over how the deal will be structured for the 24-year-old's payment. It follows a third bid from the Gunners having previously had two bids rejected after falling short of the £100 million West Ham uh, estimation. Now earlier Manchester City who had a 90 million pound offer for Rice rejected on Tuesday with you from the running. Hammers captain Rice has been at the club since joining the academy from Chelsea in 2014. Now Arsenal have also signed Germany forward Kai Havertz from Chelsea on a five-year deal until 2028 for 65 million pounds. The 24-year-old spent three years at Stamford Bridge after joining from Bayer Leverkusen for two, uh, 71 million pounds. The fee for Havertz who scored nine goals for the Blues last season could rise with add-ons. Now Tottenham must play have also signed England midfielder James Madison on a five-year deal for £40 million from relegated Leicester City. Now, the 26-year-old has won three caps for England and helped the Foxes claim the FA Cup for the first time in their history in 2021. He made 203 appearances for Leicester after joining from Norwich in 2018 for a fee of around £20 million. Now, moving to Italy, and AS Roma manager Jose Marino has been handed a 10-day suspension as punishment for comments he made about referee Daniel Chifi. Marino, who is 60, said Chifi was the worst referee he had ever met in his life after a match against Monza on the 3rd of May. The Portuguese has also been fined 50,000 euros for his offense. Let's not forget that um, he was uh, sent off in Robert's Mehmet Zeki, challenged six minutes into stoppage time at the end of the Serie A with a one or draw at the U-Power Stadium. So Marino goes on a 10-match battle. Now, finishing off with some news from the MLS, and there is a reunion between Messi and Gerardo Tata Martino, former Barcelona boss, as he has been appointed as the new manager of Inter Miami. The 60 year old replaces ex Manchester United defender Phil Neville, who was sacked on the 1st of June. The Argentine has been out of work since leaving Mexico after their exit at the 2022 World Cup group stage. Well, Tata is a highly respected figure in our sport whose track record speaks for itself, said co-owner David Beckham of Inter Miami. So that'll be all for this morning on Sunrise Sports on 3FM 92.7. Sunrise continues after the Sports of Music by DJ Abiyam. Have a very good Thursday.